It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. We've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to discuss some of Bob's most classic sayings, or what we call here very affectionately at Payne Capital Management, his Bobisms, and discuss how you can apply them to your financial life. We're going to talk about financial anxieties. There's a lot of common financial fears that you have. We're going to discuss them and tell you how to address those financial anxieties that you actually have. Along with this week's mailbag, we're going to talk about working a little bit longer, making your money last in retirement. What do you need to do? And we're going to talk about finding the right financial advisor. Is the person you're working with qualified? Do you need to find another source for your financial information? We're going to break it all down. Check it out. It's going to be a great podcast today. Bob, it's hard to believe... You're now 45 years in the planning business. That's a pretty long time to be doing this. Just saying. You know, right? If you look at my head of hair, uh, it turns out that uh, I was born gray. I'm actually turning prematurely blonde. <laughs> I noticed those blonde hairs coming in. Well, during your 45 years, you've come up with a lot of what we would call you know, very witty sayings or a litany of sayings that we call here at the office, Bobisms. So I thought we could cherry pick some of your best Bobisms, break them down for our listeners this morning. And I think one that's really apt right now would be invest in the market you have, not the market that you want. You know, what does that mean? You know, simply said, Rye, it's that the markets are efficient, right? Everything you're concerned about, everything you're thinking about, everything you're worried about, so is everybody else. There's millions of transactions done in the markets every day. It's already priced in. So don't wait for this event to play itself out. You know, get invested invest in the prices where they are because the markets are efficient and have been historically. Yeah. And I think to take it a step further is we're in a situation right now where we're always waiting for that perfect time. You're thinking, I've got all this money sitting in cash. I do want to get it invested at some point. I want to make a decision, but it's just so hard to do because things seem so uncertain. And I hear this all the time. You know, we're living, Bob, in unprecedented times right now. Well, not really. <laughs> you know, Was it more certain back in the 70s when you started in the business than it is today? Absolutely not. There's always uncertainty, right? And as soon as there's an all clear signal, usually you missed out on the opportunity because you know another good Bobism is you don't get good prices with good news. Yes, exactly. And the other thing I think is what we think about is when we want to get invested in the market per se, it's like this all or none proposition, right? Like you're going to put all your money into stocks and then the next day, the stock market's going to capitulate. But the reality of it is, when you're diversified, you can work your money into a lot of different things that it maybe have more risk and less risk when you're building a portfolio. It's never all or none when you're building your portfolio for the future. Best example I can give you, Rod, we had a couple of new clients come in last year. Remember when North Korea was sending missiles into the Sea of Japan? And they didn't want to invest because that was something they were worried about. You know, the Dow was at 22,000 when that was happening. It's at 27,000 now. Yeah, and it's something we've completely forgotten about. It. Had you not mentioned that, you know, I, I would never have thought about it again. And it's just like a lot of the things that are happening right now. So I well, think Well, the good news big... is we got those clients invested, right? Because of this other bobism. The world doesn't end very often. <laughs> I use that one all the time because you hear, well, you know, what if this happens, that happens and it's the end of the world. Well, so then you have different problems if we're at the end of the world here. <laughs> so Great Bobism, which brings me to my next Bobism, and that is portfolios should be managed in concert with every dollar that you have, right? And we get into this trouble where we have lots of different pockets of money, but it's not all working together, Bob. Yeah, quite simply, right? It's just a, a cute way of saying you have to be diversified. So think about all the different accounts you have right now. You have an IRA, you have a 401k, you have a joint account, a single account, a trust account, custodial accounts. You know, we can go on and on, but just... They're all in different accounts under different names, under different tax ID numbers, but they're all in different pockets in your suit. So what you have to do is manage your the suit as your portfolio. Don't manage each pocket because there's a lot of problems if you do it that way. Yeah, it's one of the great ironies of investing is you think because I have money in a 401k, 
I have money in a brokerage account over here with one advisor. And then my buddy from college is managing my money over here that you're actually diversified and you're probably doing a disservice. You know, you're probably overcharging yourself because you have less money with different institutions. You probably own a lot of the same things and don't even know it, Bob, which is a very common thing. And the other big thing is you're probably not taking advantage of a lot of things you can do from a tax perspective because your money's not working together. Hey, Ryan, this thing, it came up this week. I was out to lunch with an introduction, a referral from one of my best clients and a very successful contractor. And he has money all over the place. And I said, well, you know, what if you have a lot of the same things in the same portfolio? And he says, yeah, come to think of it, I really do. But he said, what difference does it make? The market's going up right now. Yeah, but what, what about when the market doesn't go up anymore? <laughs> You're out of luck, well, I dude. pointed that up. That, <laughs> that's what I pointed out to him. And he said, hey, maybe we should uh, let you review this thing and, and do an x-ray on my portfolio, which everybody should do. Don't you agree? You should because really, if you look at your overall portfolio, if you're proactive, you can see the risks that are actually coming. You know, Being blind about it or just hoping for the best is a really dangerous strategy because like once that you know, carpet is pulled from underneath you, you're out of luck. But by being proactive and looking at all your things in one place, you can actually see where the hidden risk is and you can make proactive moves to protect yourself in the future. Phenomenal point, Ry. You know, For the average investor, risks are something you're only recognized in hindsight. And that means you've already lost your money. You need a professional to do a review to reveal the risks that are so crystal clear to us. But may be appeared to be hidden if you're just looking at a pile of statements. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture for you. Simply bring in those statements. I'm sure they're in for August by now. Print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to take all your statements, take all that data, and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you can see your entire financial life at a bird's eye view. And we're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at diversification. How is your money allocated across all of your different accounts? Where is that hidden risk? Where are you taking too much risk? We're going to show you how to protect yourself and make the right proactive decisions. We're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolios you don't know you're paying. In those mutual funds, brokerage products, annuities, insurance products, we're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. And we're going to look at the most critical component, that's income. Do you have a reliable stream of income that you can live off in retirement? The ups and downs of the market are not reliable. That's not the way to build a financial plan. We're going to show you how to fill in that income gap so you have a stream of income that you cannot live. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit our website thebullish.com or paincm.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation call or text 844-752-6692 that's 844-752-6692 or simply click the get started button on thebullish.com How's that saying go? No pain, no gain? It's the name of our show, too, but we spell pain, P-A-Y-N-E. So, Bob, given that at least 60% of our firm's clients are baby boomers, we have found if you're in your early 50s through, let's say, your mid-70s, you tend to have very similar anxieties, or what we would call financial concerns. And I think one of the biggest ones we hear over and over again is if you're a baby boomer, you're expected to live longer this means your money has to last a lot longer. As a matter of fact, the average life expectancy of a baby boomer right now is 10 to 15, sometimes 20 years you know, longer than your parents and your grandparents. And do you know what the fastest growing segment of the population is right now? I know the answer to this. It's over people over 100 years old, which is amazing. Yeah, they call them centenarians. They're the fastest growing segment. You know, I was just thinking, right, you know, 110 years old will be the new 100 pretty soon. 
It's true. It's true. With you know advances in in science and technology, the reality is we're probably going to live longer, not shorter. And the problem with that, Bob, is not to say it's not a good thing, is your money's going to now have to last another decade or two in retirement. I mean, that's a lot more time. You've got to make sure that money's working for you. No, it really is, right? Because you know you're living longer because of the, of the technology that we have from medicine today. You know, we eat better, we have better quality of life, right? So people want to live longer. You know, life is better. But the other fact of the matter is, is that the technology is getting better. There's billions of dollars of research being done now to keep you alive even longer. So you're going to live much longer than you anticipate. And even if you don't think you are, you better be prepared. Yeah, because the other thing is, not only are you living longer now, but you also are seeing healthcare costs soaring. I mean, last year we were 4.6% in cost increases. You know what they're projecting now for 2020, Rye? 6%. That's 300% greater than the inflation rate. Yeah, and if you're sitting in a money market fund earning 2% on your money, you're definitely losing against healthcare costs. And that's why that's definitely not a strategy to get your money to grow over time. So it's it's so critical now more than ever, Bob, especially with interest rates so low that you're being really smart about getting your money to work. And as we know right now, cash is trash more than ever. That's not a solution, especially with the way retirement costs are going up and they're going to be for a lot longer period of time. Great point, Ryan. You need, you need the markets to work for you more than ever. You just can't afford to put your head in the ground and hope it all works out. Yeah. And I think the, the cure, Bob, if we were to say to financial anxieties is you need to know, right? You can't just put your head in the sand, hope for the best. And I know in our practice, we uncover a lot of things that you're doing wrong when you start to finally look at these numbers and start looking at what retirement's really going to cost you, where your income's going to come from, and what you're doing with your portfolio right now. Uh, it's mind blowing, right? Only 23% of baby boomers interviewed believe that they have what it takes to make it through retirement in terms of savings and investment. That means 77% of you right now don't think you have enough money. That's crazy. <laughs> That's a lot of people that don't know if they can retire or not. And really, Bob, you know, what we found is you probably can, but you definitely need to make some adjustments to your portfolio. You can't just hope. That's not a real strategy. Yeah, you know what, right? You're absolutely right. It's, it's crazy, but it's not surprising because almost everyone who comes to see us, who does a plan for the very first time, who does a wealth projection, who follows our simple process we, we call getting from point A to point B, we find out that everybody can do it. Everybody's in good shape. They just didn't know it. Well, let me put a caveat in there. You're in good shape if you make adjustments, right? I mean, what are some of the more common things, Bob, that we see that need to be fixed in your portfolio to make sure, you know, to get yourself on track? Well, the one thing that amazed me, Ryan, has amazed me over the last 45 years is that almost everyone is taking way more risk in their portfolio than they need to. Because they wake up every day thinking, oh, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. So I better keep pressing the pedal to the metal. I better keep, you know, being aggressive in my strategy. You know, Rye, you don't need to do that, do you? Well, it's worse. Baby boomers, I think, sometimes forget that they're closer in retirement now than they weren't 10 years ago. And they haven't adjusted their strategy to actually reflect that, right? More than ever. So I sat with hey, a gentleman minute, the other day. Don't be so hard on baby boomers, Rye. You know, the, the uh, <laughs> person I had lunch with this week, he was also a baby boomer. And we both look in the mirror every morning. We still see that good looking 21 year old strapping young lad. You know, we don't feel yeah. like we're in our late 60s. Yeah, you have an age today, Bob. You have an age today. <laughs> well, mentally, I haven't, but I'll tell you what, you have to realize that baby boomers think they're going to live forever. And, uh, you know, sometimes we uh, get a little myopic in our, in our vision. Yeah. Well, I met with someone the other week. Same thing. He's, he's in his mid fifties, wants to retire in 10 years. We went through a strategy. We actually put all of his investments on a spreadsheet. We were able to look at where his risk was concentrated. And he had literally 80% of his money at risk in the markets in U S mm. stocks. And he's done awesome over the last 10 years. He said, my returns have been great. And I said, yeah, I agree with you. They've been awesome. But if the market goes down, you're screwed. <laughs> this is like yeah. the risk you have with your strategy right now is tremendous. And you know, Ryan, that's so true. And a lot of you, you know, had that same strategy in 07, 08, and you lost half of your portfolio value. You didn't stick around, you know, for the recovery. So you want to make sure you have an all weather portfolio. And that combined with some of the other things you got to think about, you know, when you're planning for retirement, you know, you basically can make some adjustments and get to your goals. So right, what are some of the things you can do if we run an A to B projection, want a rail projection, and you can't make it? What what can you do? Well, there's only really three options, right? You have number one, you can work longer, which a lot of cases makes sense. Even working one or two more years 
it's amazing the dramatic impact it can have on your long-term portfolio projections. And same thing, the person I sat down with the other week, he went to retire at 63, but I said, well, if you go to 66, wait for your full Social Security, his numbers looked a lot better. The other one, Bob, we know it's not such a great idea is taking more risk, right? There's a lot of, that's fraught with, <laughs> that's just a bad idea. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, right, you know, you can also rearrange some assets right now. You know, interest rates have dropped dramatically. You can refinance your mortgage if you still have a mortgage and get a lower rate. You could sell your home or downsize your home, live in something more efficient, more more affordable. You know, I did that with, with uh, you know, your childhood home. I know you're not still talking to me because- you know, I had this big house so I could store all your medals and your guitars and <laughs> all the other junk you had in the house. But, you know, it's a, the fact of the matter is it frees up a lot of equity, you know, when you downsize your home. Yeah, I think the moral of the story here, is, Bob, is you want to be proactive, not reactive. There's a lot of things you can do today that are going to put you in great shape over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, but you've got to make those adjustments now. The things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's the only review you need. You might as well get it done now. Gather all those statements, put them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag. We're going to review everything with you and build your own personalized e-money portal that will allow you to review everything you have in real time. We'll allow you to become financially organized and view your complete financial life, not just where you are right now, but where you're going. We're going to list your goals and not only list your goals, but show how well you're progressing towards those goals. And we're going to have a big party when you hit those goals. In addition, we're going to take your portfolio and we're going to break it down into the three key elements of a successful winning strategy. We're going to look at diversification. We want to be certain that you have all that money in the different pockets invested in concert with every other dollar that you have. You don't need those hidden risks. You don't want to find out about those hidden risks when it's too late. You want to know now. We want to look at cost. You know, most of you are taking more risk in your portfolio than you need to, but you're also paying more in fees. Yeah, there are a lot of hidden fees, but they're not so hidden when we look at it, we find them. And what we're going to do is take that money out of your advisor's pocket and put it back in your pocket where it belongs. And income, you know, we all need income in retirement. You know, once you stop getting that paycheck, you have that income gap. We want to replace that earned income with passive income. And if you're retired right now, your number one goal is to stay that way. And the only way to do that is that with dependable, repeatable, inflation hedged income. And that's what we want to work on for you. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you and your family going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. Can you believe it? For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or click the Get Started button on BeBullish.com. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever had a question for myself or Bob, you can email us directly Simply go to questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com. And Bob and I will answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. So Bob, Eddie in Little Neck, Long Island writes in, I'm 62 and I'm making more money than I ever have. Congratulations, Eddie. But I hate all of the red tape and politics involved in working for a Fortune 500 company. 
So some days are great and some days make me want to retire tomorrow. Do you think I'd end up regretting if I walked away from this fantastic income at this age? You know, Eddie, I'm going to give you an absolute maybe on that. Maybe you should retire. (laughs) Maybe you shouldn't because we don't really know your whole situation. Maybe you're not able to. But I I would guess that if you're at a a high end of a Fortune 500 company, you know, you've been, uh, you know, minting some pretty impressive coin for the last couple of years and it might be too hard to give up. But, you know, Rye, you talked about this earlier when somebody's only 62 and I say only 62 because that sounds really young to me, by the way, if they just put in another two or three years with that high income, you know, with additional contributions to the 401k with those bonuses, how big a difference can that make? Yeah, that can make a huge difference. We talked about that earlier in the show today. A lot of times just working another year or two can have a substantial impact on your portfolio long term. So a lot of times it is worth it to hang in there because two years versus being retired for, in some cases, 20, 30 years, you know, it's a huge impact working those extra years. You know, if you made it to that level in a Fortune 500 company, you're a very talented person. And sometimes we might have, you know, a higher opinion of ourselves than the corporation does. Uh, you know, you might see a consultant come in on their own time doing some work when they feel like it, say, hey, that's for me. But then you find out that's not such a great gig either. So, you know, sometimes the grass looks greener on the other side. Don't you think, Ry? You know, it absolutely does. But again, it just goes down to you have to run the projections, right? I mean, you can pretty much run the numbers and see where you lie. But I'm going to guess in any situation, Bob, like a lot of our clients that are corporate executives, sometimes working that extra year or two, making that big salary, getting those benefits really solidifies that retirement. And that's what you want. When you finally retire, you don't have to worry about if you're going to run out of money. So have the numbers run, but I think it could make a lot of sense. You know, I think that's great advice, Ry, but tell you what, Eddie, if I were you, I'd hold my nose, I'd put another two years in. So Ry, we had another great email come in, this one from Vicki in Livingston, New Jersey. She's writing to you, Ry. She says, hey, how can I tell if a financial advisor is actually qualified or not? My brother-in-law just informed us that he's now a financial advisor, but just a month ago, he was calling himself a life coach. So if he's a financial advisor, all of a sudden, makes me skeptical of your entire industry. Okay, this brings up a good point. It's a very low hurdle, Bob, to get into the financial services industry. So you know, if you're looking for a financial advisor, there is a big, big gap between really good financial advisors and let's say somebody who just changed careers and is kind of winging it as a financial advisor. And we talk about this very often, but one of the first things you want to look at now when you're hiring a financial advisor is finding out if they're fiduciary. And Bob, what the heck is a fiduciary? I'm sure our listeners want to know. Yeah, a fiduciary is someone who has to put your interests first. I mean, you would think, wouldn't you just assume, Rye, that everybody in the financial services industry would automatically be a fiduciary? Wouldn't you want your interests put first? Wouldn't you want your portfolio managed as if you were a family member of that financial advisor? Well, it turns <laughs> you, out you, it doesn't work that way. You got to think very few people that are fiduciaries. Yeah, you would think. And again, it goes back to that low hurdle of entry. It's amazing. You could just sell insurance, but you can put yourself out there as a quote unquote financial planner. So even names like financial planner, which could really mean product salesman, <laughs> you know, don't necessarily mean that the person you're talking to or advising you is a financial advisor. So the first way to weed out someone who isn't truly a financial advisor would have that fiduciary responsibility. That means by law, to your point, Bob, they have to act in your best interest. They have to take tests so they understand you know, what it is to advise somebody as opposed to selling a product. But that's a great place to start. You know, Ry, I always think that uh, over 45 years, our industry's come a long way, but I'll never forget my first or second year working in downtown Philadelphia, one of my new clients came in to see me and he said, now, Bob, are you, can you promise me you're going to make a career out of this? I said, yeah, why? I mean, you know, I love it. What else would I do? I said, why are you so concerned? He said, well, my last stockbroker that I worked with, you know, I came in and he was gone. And next time I saw him was in a restaurant. I said, oh, that's good. You know, what was he doing? He said, well, he wasn't even a waiter. He was just a busboy. He said, so I just want to be certain that you're going to be around for a few years. Well, it turned out I was there for 45 years, buddy. It's true. It's true. 45 years this year. That's a pretty good long track record. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. 
Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.